Good evening, everyone. Welcome to online lecture on wireless local area network. Objective of this lectures are students will able to describe topologies of wireless LAN. Student will list of component required for wireless LAN. Student will explain the mode of operation of wireless LAN. Student will explain uh, will able to explain protocol architecture of wireless LAN, and uh, student will able to differentiate or compare different type of wireless LAN. So in order to establish a wireless LAN, basic components which are required, uh, of course, will require uh, computers, will require internet, will re require a wireless interface card and access point. So wireless network interface card uh, is the heart of wireless uh, interface card. As you know that each and every uh, device or machine has a, a network interface card, which we call as a LAN card that allow computer to connect to another uh, computer or network. Similarly, wireless NIC is required in order to connect to wireless LAN. So uh, in wireless LAN, uh, the computer can connect to network without cable because of wireless LAN, oh, sorry, wireless NIC, and most often we call it as a separate card. So this is a wireless interface card. So next we'll uh, see about access point. Uh, so access point is nothing but wireless router. Technical name for wireless router is an access point. Access point is, uh, as the name suggests, it is a point of access to wire network. You can say access point is, uh, can be act as a bridge between wire and wireless network. So we have already seen wireless uh, router when we have we had worked on uh, infrastructure mode of wireless uh, LAN in our lab course. So what are the parts of access uh, point? Uh, it consists of radio bronze receiver, antenna, and RG45 connector, which is acting, uh, which is used uh, as an interface for the wired network. So what are the basic functions of access point? As I've already explained you, uh, access point is acted as the bridge between wired and wireless LAN, and it is again acted as a base station for wireless communication. So here you can see here, this is the access point to which these two laptops are connected. Uh, so access point, uh, the range of access point or coverage area of one uh, wireless router is approximately equals to 100 to 115 meter. And uh, rate, uh, rate is dependent upon which type of uh, wireless access router uh, you are using and also depending upon strength and quality of signal. Now, access point uh, generally uh, supports over 100 users. Now, uh, in lab, uh, we have already established a wireless LAN in that we have seen that maximum to 53 uh, users can be connected to one access point. Uh, again, uh, that's depend upon uh, design uh, or subnetting. Now, uh, you're getting um, power to this access point uh, via cable and uh, you can say Ethernet and that's why we can say here uh, power over ethernet. So DC power delivered through AP through the unused wired standard UTP ethernet cable. So wireless LAN mode, uh, this means that um, uh, we can connect your wireless LAN in ad hoc mode as well as infrastructure mode. So first we'll see ad hoc mode. In ad hoc mode, uh, we can connect two or three PCs um, with each other without any central controller or you can say access point. So this is the topology of ad hoc mode and we already seen this, how to establish this topology. Uh, so to establish this topology, you need to go to uh, networks uh, from control panel to network center and then you need to um, click on set up wireless ad hoc mode. So that we have already seen uh, before. Um, back to our slides. Uh, so this ad hoc mode uh, in which you can see three laptops are connected to each other. So this is uh, the formal name for it. This is called as independent basic service set. So what are the advantage of this ad hoc mode? Um, ad hoc mode is not a permanent mode as long as that a uh, node or machine in the uh, in the area of another machine they are connected to each other. Once they are out of range, they are not connected to uh, the um, in, or they are not connected in wireless LAN. So what are the advantage of this? We can easily set up a wireless network and drawback is a wireless client can only communicate among themselves. They can't go over Ethernet. 
so infrastructure mode uh, infrastructure mode in which in which uh, the laptops or machines can connect to access point and this type of wireless lan is called as an infrastructure mode so you have central controller is there and central controller is called as access point or you can say wireless router and now uh, whatever this topology have formed the circle is called as a basic service set in order to increase the range of wireless lan you can use another access point but this range should overlap to each other so this this range uh, is called or this uh, set is called as a another basic service set this is basic service set 1 this is basic service set 2 and this is called as a extended service set so infrastructure mode is also known as in, uh, basic service set uh, so consist of wireless client and access point ex extended uh, service set which is already explained to or more vss that is a basic service uh, set wireless network installed in same area is called extended service set so what are the advantages of this network? This network is provides you mobility. Mobility of 100 meter. If you are in 100 meter area, you are connected to this access point. Or if you want to go from this area to this area. So your connection get um, handed off from this access point to this access point without disturbing your internet. Without disturbing your internet access. So that is about infrastructure mode. Uh, what are the disadvantages of infrastructure mode? Uh, as it is, uh, you can say, a large network, it is dif difficult to manage. And again, uh, in wireless LAN, one of the disadvantages of wireless LAN is performance and security. Um, so that is the disadvantage. Now we'll see next is wireless LAN protocol architecture. So here you can say that uh, this is wired LAN uh, protocols or you can say layer architecture of wired LAN which is consist of uh, seven layers. So physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. So if, 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 uh, if we want wireless LAN, only two layers have been changed and that's a physical layer and a data link layer. And the upper layer are performing the same function as that of wired um, uh, LAN. Mm, upper layers. So uh, in wired LAN, we know network layers provided us different uh, kind of protocols, transport layer, TCP, and UDP protocol, application layer, HTTP, SMTP, all these protocols are same, only the changes in physical layer and matter. So TCP IP packet in 802.11. Uh, so here, here, this is the physical layer, this is the data link layer, and this is the network layer, and this is the transport layer. So whatever the, uh, the message is coming from transport layer, it's converted into packet, a packet in this network layer. That packet is given to MAC layer, and MAC layer will form, uh, um, it will form, uh, form a MAC PDU. That is a MAC, MAC layer PDU is called protocol data unit, and that frame is handed over to physical layer. Now, physical layer will form a frame, and that frame is depend upon what uh, type of modulation scheme you have used in physical layer. So, physical layer basically there are four type of uh, modulation scheme have been used. Uh, so that is infrared, uh, then OFDM. OFDM is called orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, which we have already seen in our 4G network. Then this is called uh, DSS, direct straight uh, spectrum technique (FHSS). Uh, frequency hopping spreading spectrum technique so uh, the physical layer will form a frame and that's depend upon which type of modulation technique uh, is used there so there are four type of frame can be formed so uh, again that's depend upon which type of uh, wi-fi router you have if you have a, a wi-fi router which is 802.11a means it uses OFDM as a modulation technique if you have 802.11b means it uses DSS as modulation technique. So physical layer, so physical layer is further divided into two types. So a PMD is called as a physical medium dependent. Whatever data is coming from upper layer, that is MAC layer, MAC a PDU or MAC frame is converted into physical layer PDU. That is called PPDU. So a MAC layer, a MAC layer. Maclas frame is get converted into PMD physical medium dependent frame. 
uh, with the help of physical layer convergence protocol PLCP is called as physical layer convergence protocol and it will form form a frame so this frame is consist of like this frame again that's depend upon which type of modulation uh, scheme we have used you may use OFTM, DSS, infrared or FHSS so this frame is consist of preamble header and data so preamble some bits have been uh, given for preamble then header and then your actual payload start from here so preamble uh, consists of synchronizing uh, synchronization and start of delimiter uh, physical pdu we have already seen uh, in a zigbee zigbee lecture okay so same this preamble function is same is that of a zigbee uh, preamble zigbee's frame only this header part is different now header part is depend upon which type of modulation scheme is used here this example of this uh, PDU is given as an infrared uh, that's why this data rate is one or two mbps and that's depend upon direct current level adjustment then this length field is, de uh, is uh, defined the length of complete your frame header will define whether that frame contain any error or not and this is your actual data Again, I'm uh, again I'm uh, explaining that a uh, header. This header is different, and that's depend upon which type of uh, modulation scheme you're using. Now we will go to above layer, uh, above metal, uh, above physical layer. There is a metal layer. Uh, as I have explained you before, in wireless LAN, only two layers have been changed. That is, uh, physical layer and metal layer. So, what are the changes in metal layer? So a MAC layer of uh, wireless LAN, that is 802.11, which is the IEEE name for wireless LAN, it's different from wired LAN. Why it is different? Because in wired LAN, there is a cable, cable which is uh, which can detect if there is a collision, where in wireless LAN, the, there is no guided medium, and that's why there is very uh, there is difficulty to detect a collision. In this case, collision can be avoided, but cannot be detected. Why it is so? Because there are two problems in wireless LAN. So what are those two problems? It's called hidden terminal problem and next problem is called as an exposed terminal problem. So uh, as explained before, this is wired LAN in which A, B and C node are connected to, um, to this cable. If A wants to send a data to C, if A was to send a data to B and C was to send a data to B at the same time, then there may be a chances of collision. So in order to avoid this collision in a wired network, there is a protocol which is called as a CSMA oblique CD that is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. That protocol we have already studied in your CCTN, that is third, uh, third, third year, sixth semester. I think so. In wireless LAN, there is no cable, so this A, this circle indicate A's range, this circle indicate B's range, and this circle indicates C's range. So in this, as there is no physical medium, so collision detection is not possible in this case. And that's why we can use collision avoidance. So uh, this is uh, again because uh, in wireless network, um, in wireless LAN basically, Whenever a uh, one station is transmitting, it cannot hear. This transmission is uh, a half duplex transmission. Uh, so, uh, I've explained before the hidden and exposed terminal problem. So, we'll see uh, this first hidden terminal problem. So, what is this hidden station or hidden terminal problem? So, consider there are three devices this is A, B, and C. So, this indicates C's range. Uh, so, C is uh, transmitting in this range where A is transmitting maybe this range where B is common to A as well as C means B can hear A as well as B can hear C. A can hear B but A can't hear C. So uh, suppose C wants to transmit to B and C, uh, C started transmit, uh, transmission before transmission he uh, sends the medium and he found that it found that uh, the medium is um, uh, medium is idle and it tra started transmitting at the same time B found that medium is idle and it transmitted it started transmitting to 
um, it, uh, it found that medium is idle and it trans, uh, started transmission to B. As uh, A, A couldn't hear C, and that's why both have transmitted at the same time, and there are the chances of collision over here. So that is called hidden hidden terminal problem because C is hidden from uh, hidden from A because of B. Again, I'm explaining A, B, C are the three station. If C wants to transmit to B, C sends the medium and C found that medium is idle and it started transmitting to B. At the same time, A wants to send a data to B. A found that medium is idle as no one is transmitting because A is not in the range of C. And that's why A found that medium is idle and it started transmitting to B but B was already talking to C and that's why there is a collision. And this is called hidden station problem. This is because C is hidden from B. Now we'll see exposed terminal problem. Exposed terminal problem, the same example, A, B, C are the three station. In this case, B, B is exposed to C and B is exposed to A. How it is, that we'll see. Now, B wants to transmit to C. B sends the medium and it found that medium is idle and it started transmitting a data to C. At the same time, A wants to transmit to another station that is on this uh, on this side. Suppose there is a D station. A wants to transmit to D station. A sends the medium and it found that someone is already transmitting so I could not transmit and I need to be uh, I need to be idle for some time. Though A could transmit to D because even though A, A transmitted to D, there, there won't be chances of collision. But A falsely conclude that that something is going in the network and I should stop. So that is because B is exposed to A as well as B is exposed to C. Even though B is transmitting to C, a possibly conclude that the medium is idle and this is because A in the range of B. This is called exposed terminal problem. Again, I'm repeating exposed terminal problem is because B is exposed to C as well as B is exposed to A. That's why A possibly conclude that uh, medium is uh, busy and I could not transmit to D. So that whatever I have explained, it is written over here. So today with this two problem, uh, there are two mode of operation, which is uh, first mode is called as a DCF, distributed coordination function. And the next mode is called as a PCF, point coordination function. So what is this distributed coordination function? So distributed coordination function uses CSMA of the CA protocol that I have already explained. Carrier sends multiple access with collision avoidance. But now how it works, that we'll see. So in order to avoid the collision, if any station want to transmit um, a data, there are two type of problems, hidden and exposed terminal problem. And to avoid this, before transmitting, any station will send RTS signal. So if any station wants to transmit a data, it will send RTS. RTS is called as a ready to send signal to to a receiver and wait to get uh, uh, a message that is called CTS that is clear to send from the receiver. So RTS and CTS help determine who else in the range. Um, it will determine that um, the medium is busy and nobody can be transmitted. That we'll see um, when we'll go ahead. So uh, here A, this is A's range, B, this is B's range. So A wants to transmit uh, to B. So A is transmitting to B RTS signal. RTS is called ready to send. So whenever A is transmitting RTS signal, C can hear that signal and E can hear that signal. And C and E knows that something is going in the network and they cannot send a data. So in this way, the hidden terminal and exposed terminal problem can be avoided. Similarly, when A gets CTS that is clear to send signal from B. D is in the area of B. D will come to know that something is going in the 
network and i uh, and i should uh, i should stop sending any data so d and e will send any data as d and e is in the range of b so here a b c d and e all are, all will come to know that a and b are talking to each other so we need to we need to uh, stop for some time and that's why there there, um, there is collision avoidance so here uh, is explained in the help of timing diagram on this axis there is time on this axis there are there are devices a b c and d so a was transmitted to b so a will send rd signal rd is called as a ready to send signal uh, to b after receiving the ready to send signal b will send clear to send signal after that clear to send signal then and then a can send a data as this ready to send and clear to send can be heard by c and d as the c is in the area of b sorry in the area of a and d is in the area of b c will stop transmission once it hear rts till it hear acknowledgement it won't send anything well d is in the area of b so we'll see d is in the area of b or in the range of b so that's why and b is transmitting cts so it won't transmit anything from cts till acknowledgement acknowledgement so all a b c d as well as e will come to know that there is something is going in the network and need to stop for some time so this is called distributed coordination functions csma oblix ca protocol so there are certain rules um, before sending uh, data and acknowledgement before sending data before sending data is this data you need to stop for some time and this is time is called as a distributed coordination function inter frame spacing so this time is given on this axis there is a time in microsecond on this axis there is a client so uh, as client is start sensing a medium and medium is idle though medium is idle it will send a data uh it will uh, it will stop for some time or wait for some time which is 50 microsecond and that timing is called as dfs inter frame spacing so here uh, it will stop for some time or wait for some time and that is called dfs do medium is idle and um, uh, b will get rts uh, as soon as b will get rts it won't send cts it will wait for some time and that is called small uh, interference spacing so this is called small interference spacing and again before acknowledgement the time is called as small interference spacing and that time is 10 microseconds so small interference spacing time is 10 microseconds and uh, distributed coordination function interference spacing time is 50 coordinate uh, 50 microseconds so these are the certain rules need to follow uh, in csma ca algorithm so in order to avoid collision uh, other mode of operation is called as a point coordination function so what happen in the point coordination function the base station or you can say access point or you can say a uh, wireless router so this is basically wireless this is wireless router or access point uh, is acting as a pulling device so it will pull or send a beacon frame to this uh, client a then and then client a can send a data to this then it will send a beacon frame to client b then and then client b can send a data to access point then third then fourth this is called point coordination function so point coordination function uses a base station to pull other station to see if they have frame to send no collision occurs base station send beacon frame periodically base station can tell other station to sleep to save uh, to go to sleep mode in order to save battery so the next uh, and most important topic uh, is types of wireless lan now types of wireless lan is depend upon physical layer as i have told you physical layer can be used a uh, different uh, mod uh, modulation technique that may be modulation encoding technique as ofdm so if it is using ofdm as a modulation technique then that type is called as ipple 802.11a if uses dtps technique it called 802.11b if uses dsss oblic ofdm as a modulation technique it is called ipple 802.11g again ofdm is called as ipple 802.11n so the standard had come in the in the year of 99 this had come in 99 this uh, this came 
in 2003 and this came in 2000. So raw data rate um, is theoretical data rate. If you see, uh, it is giving you 54 Mbps of speed. It is giving you 11 Mbps of speed and this is called your Wi-Fi. Well, this is called as Wi-Fi 5. It is called Wi-Fi 5 because it is working on 5 gigahertz of unlicensed spectrum. It is working on 2.4 gigahertz of unlicensed spectrum. So, and giving the speed of 11 Mbps, here 802.11G is giving you a theoretical speed of 54 Mbps and it is working on the frequency of 2.4 GHz. Well, this gives you um, theoretical, uh, frequent, uh, theoretical data rate of 600 uh, Mbps and working on 5 GHz of uh, frequency. So, uh, though theoretical uh, data rate is this, but actual data rate or actual throughput you are getting uh, uh, when you are using at play 0.2.11, you are getting 4 to 5 Mbps. Here you are getting again um, till 6 Mbps. Uh, here you are getting 20 to 25 Mbps. And here you are getting maximum 100 Mbps. So, modulation scheme 64 QAM, 11 CCK, 64 QAM, 64 QAM. Uh, modulation and encoding technique I've already told you and channel bandwidth means one channel bandwidth 20 megahertz 20 megahertz 20 megahertz 20 megahertz and like this there are maximum 11 channels are there so this is all about a wireless local area network I hope you have got uh, this topic and the most important question on this topic is uh, explain hidden terminal and exposed terminal problem and how to avoid hidden terminal and exposed terminal problem. Okay, uh, thank you.